welcome back. Uh... Oh. <laughs> How dare he desecrate the kiwi like that? I mean, desecrate? <laughs> you're yeah, not saying a lot about Jake's lips there. That's like, oh. there are some people who would kill for that. Rusty. I mean, but I don't need to kill for it, surely. <laughs> surely we can compromise before murder. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, uh, speaking of kiwi, uh, a bunch of kiwis in the chat, Skimmy, yes. were saying mm. uh, the conversation earlier about what do you guys, how do you guys greet each other. Yeah. Uh, 187 Juggernaut says, we don't need to say anything, you just give each other the eyebrows. The thing that I always found funny when I first moved to New Zealand was like I'd walk down the street and you'd just wait. You're wait, wait, what? Yeah, where are you from? No, so I was born in London. What's wrong with your oh. voice? That's why my accent is so bizarre, right? So I was born in London. I moved to New Zealand when I was twelve. I mean, yeah. So I moved there when I was twelve. So I started high school in New Zealand, and then I did fourteen years of life in New Zealand before I was like, you know what? Might as well go to Australia, lol. You've taken on such a heavy Kiwi accent for someone who spent 12 years like, I think, with a British accent. I think like in the first four weeks of me being in New Zealand, I'd already picked up like sweet ass bro, chur, because I just wanted to fit in and not be like memed about like, oh, say sausage, say this, say Harry Potter. Say <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to be sausage. I don't want to so be bullied. Cool. And they'd be like, how do you say 10? And I'd be like, 10. And they'd be like, no, it's 10. And I'm like, oh, come on, get me out of here. So no, I've picked up certain things, but I think that the, bringing it back to your point, when I walked down the street, the thing I noticed the most was people just like, oh, how are you? And it's not to say like, how are you doing? Yeah. It was literally just like, how are you? Is it the eyebrows it the as eyebrows? well? Yeah, it's you like, get the eyebrow raised there. Because yeah. we do the, like, the head yeah. raise. It's like, it's like how are you? And you'd be like, yeah, good mate, you? And you'd be like, yeah. And then you just walk off. Yeah, okay. I don't actually care how you are. Eyebrows are, are suggestive hey, how are you? in Australia. Yeah, eyebrows, <laughs> you give some of the eyebrows here, you're doing what Jake did to that quokka. Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, NZ Smite said, we definitely say soft G. So you're obviously just hanging out. Well, I think maybe in Auckland. But yeah, Chad can't believe that you're not from New Zealand. I originally. feel betrayed. So a little do I. Bit. What is because I? I've, I've been making fun of you for being from New Zealand when I had a whole range of different <laughs> options available to me. I what is Chad out. saying, Nick? Uh, they just said that. Wait, what? Laugh my ass off. And then it goes into like Nick has a point, and then it just descends into an insult thing for oh, me. Oh, beautiful. Anyway, it's time to move on. Roast me. Um. Uh, also, I love the fact that he said. He changed his accent because he doesn't want to be teased. And then you were like, wait, I've been making fun of him because of New Zealand. You're telling me there's a whole other country I could take advantage of? Yeah, yeah. go, go for it. People. I love it. Um, uh, speaking of not bad things, though. Legends of Terror, mm -hmm. Uh And uh, also TFT. So both of these games mm -hmm. come to mobile very soon. I just want to point out, we'll talk about Legends of Terror because we haven't actually addressed it as a group of friends. We've only addressed it as a commercial on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> Which yeah. I feel like we should have done maybe as one of our first segments. Totally. But, you know, <laughs> we, we were still feeling each other out, learning where we all came from uh, <laughs> nationality-wise. Uh, first of all, I just want to say it's unbearable, unspeakable, unfaithful that I am not in the TFT mobile beta right now. Well, I was talking to Rusty about this before. I've only just registered today, but I've saw him post on Twitter that he's like an exclusive I've elite. You're in. Yeah. I'm in. Are I'm, you in? I'm pretty sure I. I get. I'm. Are you about to post? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Weird flex, but I, I get in everything somehow. Yeah. Okay. Well, Without signing up or anything. Can someone fix it for me? Because this, I'm the host of the show. I need. I need to understand these games. Uh, but Legends of Runeterra, a game that. Are you I, a TCG? -er? Yeah, massively. Yeah. Like my entire life. Uh, and it's actually, there's been multiple uh, sort of TCG, CCGs that I've played uh, throughout my I career. You're speaking, is this like turn card games? Trading card game. Trading card game. Yeah, games. collecting okay. card game, trading okay. card game. Yep. Uh, deck builders, all this sort of stuff. Mm. I love card games. Uh, and uh, But over the last sort of six months, I've fallen off. Everything that I've been playing, haven't touched other games for a while, mm. just kind of bored. Then I get into the closed beta for Runeterra. I was a massive fan. The open beta right now, absolutely love it. And I'm not just shilling here because I'm in the right building and they don't <laughs> let me out unless they say nice things about the video game. I actually think it's a great advance and twist. So what do you like about it? What do I like about it? I like the fact, I like the pace. I really like the pace that it's not a sort of like rush based game. Yep. That the, the, you know, there's not a lot of zoo. I mean, there is one really annoying zoo deck with the spiders, but that's not the primary way. I love the, uh, the turn based system. I love the fact that, you know, it's kind of like, like other uh, uh, TCGs or CCGs where you can interact with your opponent's uh, cards before everyone starts fighting. Uh, that to me is something that you know the, the video game versions of some of these games have, have, have lacked. 
Um, mm -hmm. On a really superficial level, I think the game looks great. I love the uh, champion cards and the upgrades. I think the upgrade system is super interesting. The art's also fantastic. Like they went to like really big levels to make the art good to the point where like it, the art on the cards is like a small part of a bigger picture. Yeah, expands. And it all kind of works in together for characters that have never existed. So yeah. they're like at super intricate and well done art. You played it? So I was going to lead the segment to Nick to then like put it forward to me then to, to the viewer. I've never played it, so like... Have watch, you played it? You, did you ever play like Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh or any of those? Uh, I played Pokemon, but like just more as like a collection game. Yeah. Do you know like the classic where you trade like a Charizard for a potion and tell them like it's the best? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you play, yeah. It was so good and then like they'd ban it at school and you just go home and cry. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I never played... And the bad people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never played card games since. So like for me, I, I don't mind them. I think they're a really good game, like a, like a chill game to play on a train or something when you're just like trying to kill time. Mm -hmm. I would never be seriously invested in it, but like something just to pass an hour or so. Yeah, like try and sell it to me and try and sell it to them. See, I like what you like about it, but for the opposite reason. So I'm like a face slash zoo player. Oh, right. I love so zoo. Yeah, I like fun. the fact that I can play flood boards mm -hmm. and it's actually like a difficult way to play the game. Yeah. Even like at an intermediate level, because I wouldn't say I'm like expert at this game, but I'm certainly not like a novice. Um, whereas other card game options have very much tried to slow their own pace down mm -hmm. by making control or clear decks like mm -hmm. the popular ones, yeah. right? Whereas I feel like this doesn't have necessarily that. There's certainly a lot of different options. And I think that Zoo or Face is a viable way to play it because of kind of the card architects that are in there, like the challenge and... Uh, the the challenge system is fantastic. That are available, like the rush spells and how so many of them are barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, quick attack is like just my favorite mechanic in the whole game. I play a Center Lucian deck. Uh, that is very zoo focused and yep. very quick attack focused. Um, so I just like the options you have because of the different way the cards are. Well, I think that on that, the idea of the the way that like zoo decks can interact with stuff like Challenger, I think the opposite of that, the fact that I can interact so much with your zoo deck with like stuns and recalls and that sort yep. of thing. And then I just need to basically wait you out for a few turns and then my hero, like, like Fiora so many with of 16 the... barriers and I die. Fiora is the only champion in there where I'm just like, I don't like this as a mechanic, the idea of like... I don't like Yasuo. Kill four yeah. games I'm not gonna lie, I, I really don't like game end cards. I just feel like that it's too easy to win with it. The team. other thing is, is I've never met an OTK in this game that I cannot avoid if I play well. What about... But what about a Fiora? No, so I still feel like I have more control over Fiora than like... Uh, Fiora has over you? Like, no, like, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> the Treant deck that has <laughs> 52 yeah, like, right. yeah, damage yeah, on yeah. Treant yeah. with like, unless I have Ice Barrier up and I'm playing Mage, yeah. I die to it. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what was it? Nature's Wrath or whatever yeah. the heck it was. Yeah, I, I feel like I have more control over Fiora and the stupid Recall Yasuo deck then I have over like some of the older OTK combos that were just like, get to turn nine, get your four OTK cards out, and you can win the game. Uh, all right, Bird's Rule says, is this a long ad? Isn't all esports just a long ad? <laughs> what do you want Aren't from all esports just Stop long ads for Talk the video about games? video games. Like, <laughs> My God, we can't what? win. I give you a segment where it's about how many people have died because of hot water <laughs> taps. And then I give you a segment where we... Analyze in detail intricate TCG builds and a game that we're actually good at and no one no one's happy No one's happy. I'm done. You can sort yourselves out. So How about someone else take us to freaking game number four order versus chief Someone else talk us through this. All right, cool. We're gonna kick it off with the auto line up. I assume uh, Rossi so. take us through sure uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sly through the top lane, only in the jungle, Harry mid lane, Rare and Ayla are the bottom lane from order. And how do you think they went in week one, Sport? Up and down week one, to be honest. A very good clean game versus Gravitas, apart from Rare getting picked on mid lane and uh, only getting picked in the jungle. It was a relatively good performance. Uh, then losing out to Legacy after the 9,000 gold lead was obviously a little bit of a bummer, but they're going to go up against their opponents today and their opponents are going to be the Chiefs Esports Club. Skimmy, yes. take us through. Yeah, well, it's going to be a fantastic roster for them. Two Korean imports. We've got Tien, Croc, Claire, Katsuri, and Korea CK. Big stand-up for me has to be Katsuri. Really, really strong on that uh, ADC last week, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do this week. But they played some pretty high execution compositions, so I'm wondering how they're going to flex and adapt coming into this must-win for both teams that kind of showcases who's the top dog at the moment. So they did some really cool things last week, Chiefs. They played one game, first day, our uh, first game of the Dianna season. Yasuo. They had a Dina Yasuo yeah. combo. It was Tian, it was Claire that yeah. were popping off. The second game was everyone else. 
playing well and Claire and Tan just kind of playing, you know, their role, but the role on who carried completely shifts. Can I just say this is pretty easy. Yeah, much better. <laughs> um, however, this is no trouble at all. We are about ready to get into the final game of the night. It is going to be Order versus the Chiefs Club. Out. You're not going to want to mess it until we get into champ McDonald's Champion Select. Let's check out Legends of Ruterra for the 12th time. We'll be going for the final time today. Let's jump into the Mecca's Champion Select. If you have just tuned in, it's the final game of today. But also we've got another day tomorrow to kick off week number two. It's all to take it on the Chiefs, both sitting in very comfortable spots. Both definitely looking to showcase who is the stronger of the two. Ooh. And that is a first pick set. Incredibly strong, Ooh. but incredibly susceptible to the ranged abilities. I think I only need to communicate and ooze at the moment. Ours, maybe, if things change. <laughs> We've got two great champions to kick this off. Now, let's add some further context to this Order versus Chiefs. Swiper versus his old organization. Yeah. Only Ayla versus their old organization. And it's TN, the upstart, the rookie, the person who replaces Swiper, even played in the finals when the Chiefs started losing against Swiper as he now goes over, reinvigorated with the side of Order. The Armored Titan against the self-described Armored Sloth. <laughs> and now, we said the Titan would win, but what can you say, the Sloth's been pretty good so far. Definitely going to be a game that is more than just two teams going up against each other. It's going to be a battle of egos, battle of, well, who made the right decision, really, at the end of the day, to flex these rosters on out. We're seeing a lot of different picks here that we haven't seen too commonly before. Obviously, the Aphelios is the standard, but once again, to reflect, we're not on patch 10.3, so Akali hasn't been changed. He's still as strong as ever. We're only two weeks in, so no one needs to freak out if there's a loss just yet. But we'll see how this draft continues. Now Aurelia being locked in. We have both solo laners pres presumably done there, and the full top side locked in by order, saving their bottom lane. Looks like they're going to maybe suffer some 80 carry bans against them. With the center gone, the Aphelios locked in, so you most likely see the Misfortune taken off the board but it does mean they get to choose the 2v2 they get against their opponents. Or maybe ban away some specific champions down there in the support role as well and pick one for themselves. We'll see how it goes. I'm very curious. Set for me is just so, so annoying to try and gank, especially if you've got a double melee composition trying to go at him. That in the top lane and that in the jungle. Because he just stacks up so much grip. He just slams you down, baits you out with a slam dunk. The guy is an absolute monster, but whenever I've seen him have trouble, it's when you've got a composition that can kite. You're looking at slows, you're looking at maybe even flash your augment uh, mid laners. You know, you want some kind of ability to make sure that he can sit back. It can't be a threat. Syndra Band's a curious one. Maybe I'm crazy, but maybe Set also flexes to support. This is the kind of things that Order will do. Support? Hey, when it first came out, I looked at the champion and said, he's not a support, but he's so broken, he may as well be. Wow. Why not? That'd be an Let interesting bot lane. Why yeah. not? Put Next in. minute you'll be telling me that Rengar's the support because he just hogs the brush with the Conclave. No, I, I joke towards this because the Syndra has been banned and it makes me wonder if that was something that Rare was going to play or if it's more targeted towards Heiru, which is why these questions come up in okay. my mind. A second mid lane champion is taken off the board, so again, those feelings start to actually grow. I'm not going to talk about it any further. We'll see what order chooses to lock in. Their blue side, so they'll reveal both champions at once. We look towards the Chiefs now. Support champion would make the most sec sense they could hold the flex for the last pick. Yeah, it would, absolutely. Fresh band away, Nautilus band away as well. So no priority here from the Chiefs to take away an AD carry. Quite happy to let Rare 7 have anything he likes, potentially trying to draw him into the misfortune. A bit one of the reasons they're currently hovering the Brom. Major, major focus on taking away what Harry can do. We saw how strong he was last week. The fact that he could just run the show as LeBlanc, take anything, do anything. Quite if ridiculous. there ever was a lane that Set would go with, it would be the go quick combo of Yubi. 
Yumi would be quite disgusting, to be honest. Oh, Braum being done. Braum, Aphelios, very good classic lane. Good crowd control. Not yep. much more you could say about it. They're just a good lane. Ah, uh, the Rakan. Nice they have little no idea pip. what they're going against. There is also a magic damage dealer in the jungle there from only, so there's no real concerns with the Zaya Rakan if they wanted to do that lane. And when you look at everything that's been banned, Mr. Fortune hasn't even been touched. Could be considered. The Rakan's a nice little pickup there. Obviously, so so safe. The ability to jump in and then jump out for Null. And that's going to be the Harry LeBlanc. I like to see this. He was just so, so destructive, really, for the lack of better words. The Sun's going to be a safe pickup here to try and stay safe. But right now, we'll have a lot of threats, a lot of ways to really get to a key target. Irelia being the major one, obviously, with the ultimate. Make sure that Philios can do little to nothing. That's a Is scary Aurelia bot lane. Aurelia bot lane. That's interesting. This is, I feel like this is, unex I may not have done enough research to know why this is a thing. I haven't, I haven't seen this running around on any of the streams that I've watched, but nevertheless, we've got ourselves an Aurelia Ricard down there from Rare, unless they trade with a couple seconds left. So we'll run through the rosters from top to bottom. Why is there no coach interview? <laughs> you, this is when you would want a coach interview, right? Just to be like, what is going on? Why do we have Aurelia bot lane? That's not a Yasuo. We what have- are we looking at? Swiper and Tien playing brawlers into each other. That's the first place that is very exciting. The grudge match between the two of them. There's no bad blood to say the least, but it is the replacement against the veteran. And that's a place that we'll always be looking towards. A feud between both players. If you haven't looked at their social medias today, definitely check that out. They've shared some words between each other. They've also shared some pretty bad photos back and forth <laughs> from what they look like years past. I think I saw one of Tien. Yeah. Showing him a screenshot on Google about like where to find a retirement village. They were using reaction images of their own fo of their opponent's photos, but from like a minimum of two years ago. I think it's quite mean, but quite funny. I'm sure beyond the scenes, they're uh, good mates, having obviously been on the same roster together. The rookie working up against the master. It's gonna be a very very interesting matchup to watch there in the top lane, but. I think for me, you're looking at that mid jungle once again, looking to see yeah. how long, uh, how quickly they can sort of get that online. Definitely. I think mid jungle is the place to be. Uh, Order have an Elise and a LeBlanc, so their pick threat's incredibly high. At level six, however, that doesn't stay as the easiest thing to do on the rift against an Olaf and a Lissandra, yeah. who can diffuse a little bit of that poke. So maybe looking towards those 2v2s. And we can beat around the bush all we like. We can look at the Bruisers top lane. We can look at the mid jungle duos and discuss their impacts. The place we have to look is bot lane and what they're able to get done down there because it is a melee champion in the Aurelia and a mostly melee champion in the Rakan. But they have a lot of dashes, they have a lot of gap close, and they have a lot of kill turrets they're able to combo together. But it's against a very traditional bot lane. And I feel like Braum was the correct pick here. Yep. And it's not like the Chiefs didn't see this coming. Remember that through the bands. They were banning mid laners. Yep. So they were very much aware that this was happening. This isn't a surprise to them, it would have to seem. And so they've gone for a bottom lane with Aphelios just being a good champion, locked in, good wave clear, good control, decent range, depending on the weapons, of course, as to what they actually provide. So we'll see how this one plays out, because this is going to be one of those games where we learn by watching. I think, yeah, it's going to be a very high risk, high reward lane, especially for Order here, to try and get that one online to really get in uh, Aphelios' face. I think uh, Chris CK is going to have his work cut out for him here. Really going to have to be on the ball to make sure that he can apply those frozen stacks as quickly as possible. Can shut down the mobility that will be coming out here from this bottom lane. But I suppose, at least pre-6 anyway, as we've mentioned, mid lane is going to be the focus to try and find Harry a sizable lead to unlock him and allow him to rotate through and unlock the side lanes too. I didn't get to see, may have missed a minion of experience there as Swiper in that top lane. Went on a big journey, big walk, as they were defending the bot side jungle from an invade. Now, what that meant at the same time, I was observing the pings from both teams. That the Chiefs, they don't know where the jungler started too much unless they had that ward at the red buff, which they did, you know? So he was just confused. And they're like, where is this top lane and what's he done? So now they're not sure if there's been like a deep ward placed at the enemy red buff. So the Chiefs, we'll see how Croc continues to path this one out. That's the only risk that they really face here besides the regular full clear, where it's an Olaf against an Elise, and the Olaf will always be faster. Ward goes down into the river right there. Obviously, communications say, look, hey, you know, Olaf is top. That's where I'm pathing as well. 
Ganking top isn't going to be the play as of yet just now. Farming pretty well here. The bot lane of Auto is Sans going to be super aggressive top. He really is. He's going to jump straight in there. But if he did have Ignite, that could have been a kill for sure. But they go to mid lane instead and they take down Claire. Yeah, they're able to get that in mid lane only with a very good gank moving from top side. The advantage is that they didn't know where he was exactly, which is by Chiefs in the bottom lane have been playing pretty reserved, pretty safely. Their wave starts to push in now. But at the same time, they didn't expect it in mid. And what can you do against a LeBlanc and an Elise pre-level 6? Exactly what we spoke about. We'll see it here. It's quite simple. The chains connect. And because the chains connect, the combo, free. The kill, free. Yep, the disengage unable to happen because the CC is just too strong. Able to overlap that one for free as a result. Olaf being aggressive right now. Croc is um, quite keen to try and look around for some counter jungling of his own. Double buff in hand. Going to pick up those wolves quite nicely for himself there. And I wonder if it's because Aphelios feels like he has a little bit of setup time with certain weapons. Anytime you look towards an auto attack, there's an opportunity for the Elise, uh, the Elise for the Aurelia or the Rakan to close distance. One of the biggest weaknesses Aphelios has is that while he has a lot of damage, he can do damage from different ranges, has crowd control, has wave clear, he doesn't have mobility. No. He stands very much still a lot of the time while he's dealing damage, and that's not great against your opposing bottom lane. Could just be that they like it, that's worked. I mean, the Leech Pistol, obviously, when you activate that one, gives you the ability to damage on the run, but I think really for him, he's trying to cycle through that ammo as quickly as possible to unlock the Gravitum, the cannon. Give himself the ability Aurelia to slow. Aurelia may one hit the turrets. I'm not certain. That'll be something that is a case-by-case -case basis thing, so we'll see. As that was a very aggressive move from Croc. He's got nowhere to repel to right now. He's stuck in a bit of a tough spot, and uh, Claire will pick up that one quite conveniently. And that was great by Claire because he places the ward across where the Elise could have repelled to, but yep. times it with the repel coming down so that there was no time, there was no opportunity, and so they just get the kill. The flash was used by Croc to close that distance as mid once again. Lots of health trading. Harry still getting aggressive right now. He has opted for the cleanse as well to make sure that he can uh, respect this matchup in mid lane and not fall victim to anything. Obviously, if CC is there, they will guarantee these kills, but we're edging that much closer to level six, and with Aftershock in play, gonna make it very, very tough to try and take down Alessandra now. Rare has some biggies down here as well, so while it looks like he is out of mana, he does still have a decent amount. You can see he just pops it then. Ayla now inbound, so they clearly want to push this wave. They haven't cleared this bush, however, as I think that was only who placed the ward. I think, though, this is the dream weapon. Um, for Aphelios right now, obviously, to try and stem the bleeding. If anybody jumps upon him, he's not fully reliant on Brom to try and set things up with. They can actually overlay it with the stun from Brom, then followed up by the root from the Weapon Master. Gives them a lot of CC, which we may not see actually come across here in the laning phase, but especially in team fights. Oh, oh yeah. Comes the, out. With a Brom, you wouldn't complain with the red weapon either. No, absolutely not. Lots Love of it. heavy fight trading and fighting up here. Swipe is just being mechanics on right now. He really is. And it's really easy to play the Akali into the set if the set's not engaging onto you first, trying to hit the face breaker and punch your nose in. Because you can kite around the W, the true damage portion of the set W, which is insanely broken if it connects. Very easy to just dodge around it as an Akali. Lots of mobility there. Yeah, well, every single time he goes for the W, then he just uh, pops the shroud and does a little dance and sidesteps that one. I'm not going to be too worried about that what whatsoever. We're going to go for another scuffle in the top lane again. Oh. Once again, out comes the smack. He goes for the flash. He goes for the engage. He's going to get the kill. Is he going to get out? I didn't see a triumph heal. No, there was no triumph heal. He just had enough health. I believe the potion, the first one, was running only now in the area. The turret's there as well. Tien does die. You can see the pop-off in his player camera when he got the kill. And now just a little nod of sadness afterwards is only in the area. However... During the time that only goes up there, they get the dragon as well. So an ocean dragon now to the pockets of the Chiefs. You'd be pretty comfortable with that one if you're Tien. That's a lot of momentum yep. in your favor. And he catches the wave with teleport as it crashes. Yeah, he really wanted to try and deny himself before only could pick up an assist there. In this case, obviously, he picks up the kill. So Swipe is still in this one. But he is falling behind about 400 gold at this stage. I suppose he's not going to be too upset about this laning phase because his oh. main strength comes in the team fights. Yeah, no, he'll be pretty upset about this one. It's not great. The experience difference is six to five, which is where the fight took place, and Tia's still able to play with his food right now. Item difference is significant because any auto attack trades that Tian plays towards, I mean, the null's only going to buy you time. The revolver is meaningful damage. If you're wave clearing with the W was set, 
Not yeah. a great position. The wave will push. When you put it like that, Rusty. Yeah, you, you, you raise a valid argument. I mean, you, you also got Alessandra <laughs> topside. The wave's pushing towards the turret. Olaf's about to get the red. If they really wanted to punish Swiper, they could threaten the dive. Hard to do, I will say, because it's a set, of course. But it does mean that Tian, if they don't want to dive him, still has freedom to go to the river, get some control of the whole top side of the map. So priority completely lost in the top lane in for order. You're mainly now looking at the bottom lane, which for the most part, where this double bruiser composition has been in their face. Phileas is keeping up in the CS for the most part, but has never really stepped further forward than where he's at right now. Very, very aware of the engaged potential. Yeah, so what does this composition have from order, right? They have a lot of bruisers. They have a lot of item spike windows that will be very similar. You know, the Trinity Force champions running around. We've seen Black Cleavers from sets. And we've seen Trinity Forces really depends on how the players are feeling. It's very efficient to have a Trinity Force on a, on a punch-based champion just because it's quite good on him, but the extra health of a Black Cleaver is still nice. However, that means that the item spike timings will be similar with an Aurelia, who goes team to the Trinity Force. Mid lane, who just wants that one item loot and spike, because we've actually got only caught out a little bit there. Forced to burn that flash. Let's get Suri. Makes Ayla disappear from this lane. Buys himself a bit of time to try and find some priority of his own. But it seems like the Chiefs are finding the right priority in the bot lane at the right moments as they're able to now obviously capitalize on the likes of Drake. I think now if you order, you're trying to really bank on the fact that can we try and get some priority in that top lane? Can we try and get the Rift Herald? Because we've got a lot of our resources so far going into hoping that Harry can just one-shot someone. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of one-shot potential, but... You know, when I'm talking towards items, we haven't hit those spikes yet. So this is definitely a waiting game from the side of order. Get those spikes. Look at objectives. Dragon in two minutes, probably the place to be. Uh, you would expect from them in terms of objectives they may want to fight towards. Notice the pathing nice here boom. of uh, the Chiefs. They were opting towards the bottom side of the map, going through the jungle. They may now just decide to rotate through to mid lane as Claire finds himself up against three. Can he get out? He's just going to actually hold it. He's just going to stand strong and say, I want to fight. I've got boys in support. Going to force out the rotation there from Tien, who still has the priority in the top lane. Yeah, pretty much everybody gets here. Rare now waiting in the wings as well. So the threat was there. Both respective teams come on mass. Chiefs bringing five people to the Rift Herald right now. Claire probably going to recall to teleport in if the fight were to happen. So good early recall there from Claire. Order. They're hunting. They know it's being done. They're looking. Swiper only just starts to move now, though. Where is a good ward for him to go for right now? Because Order doing a fantastic job of sweeping this to make sure that he can't come in. He's looking for the teleport. He's pinging furiously, saying, I need a wall. Do not kill that Rift Herald right now. And they may just look to try and force a 4v5. He actually comes from the uh, top lane minions himself. Croc finds the first one. And they're going to chase on through right now as the exhaust is onto Tien to make sure Akali can't do Akali things right now. But she's just going to jump in regardless and find a second as they now look for a triple. Harry with the clones, Jukes one way. He's going to try and get the Bramble as they get the kill. And that is a triple kill around the Rift Herald, which they say thank you very much for. Yeah, and the teleport may not have been in the perfect position for Claire, but it doesn't matter when Tien's able to put the damage down very efficiently onto his opponents. Now, 2-1-2 two, and two is the Akali. And this all starts with Krop trying to flash away from the pit. You know, the action didn't seem like the ideal situation for the for the Chiefs. And the Herald does go over to order. It's been collected by Rare as well. We'll see how the Herald goes down and who's able to win this one. But imagine Croc's just not in a position to finish this. Ayla kills the eye. It's just that simple, right? But Swiper ints for it. He dies basically to get them away yeah. from the objective. And then Tian's just able to come in, use those mechanics, get the kills. Claire's able to make sure that one's cleaned up and then they'll find themselves Hayri. They pick correctly on the clone because the Brawn passive makes it obvious. They get themselves that extra kill. The CC that they had there was uh, beautiful. A bit of a different fight though. They had some follow-up support there for Big Swips. You can see how much he was able to do just single-handedly, how long he was able to survive. And that's obviously with no items to his name. You're just talking about Merc Treads at this stage. So it's only going to get uh, scarier. Wonder if we're going to opt towards a more tank oriented set as opposed to a DPS focused one. Uh, yeah, at the very least we'll get the Phage. I would like to see him go more tank oriented, I think, as well. You still want a bruiser item. You'll still want the Black Cleaver most likely here if you were Swiper. It's a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier to get. You won't be trading against the Kali anytime soon. That much is for certain. Now there is the Herald at last, 45 odd seconds. Once it has been picked up, waiting for Rare to see where that is going to go, which lane. As right now, he's stuck in the 1v1 against Claire, who only really has the magic resistance, to be fair. 
Ultimate's Dragon Spree. There's no contest. Yeah, Rare wants to rotate down. You'd imagine to try and find some value with this Rift Herald. Croc quite happy just to pick up the second one of this game. We're going to have a Cloud Drake coming into this one. So lots of mobility. Could be pretty decisive, actually, for both compositions. Both would benefit a fair bit from the mobility, as well as that reduced CDR. So game on. It's nice to be a champion like Set and have that move speed, just to be able to run at people a little bit faster. But they run away just as fast. So yeah, who really does gain from that? Who knows? It's the people who rotate between lanes. <laughs> Why do I say who knows and then answer questions? I mean, I suppose th the biggest, if we're looking on the side of Chiefs right now, Tien being the most obvious one, but can still give him a bit of mobility to make sure he doesn't fall victim to the bum rush, if you will, that order have to come at you and say, you have no mobility, you're fully reliant on your, your team to peel you. That gives him some self-sustain. And so there was no fight for the Mountain dra Drake, the objective that we said may be considered with item spikes. The item spikes didn't come through either, but it was the Herald just prior where that big fight happened. And because the Chiefs come out on top, they get themselves another dragon for free. Still waiting for this Herald, the place that it's going to go. You can see that only is now passed towards bot lane. There is a possibility that they use this lane. He just walks through the lane itself after Krugs, and that's where they summon the Herald. You have to keep your eyes on Ayla. I think most importantly than anyone else, the positioning that he takes himself to clear wards. Ayla's notorious for just recalling, walking to someone who's rift through mid lane or mid lane adjacent in his positioning, but then he'll go to the most meaningful place, which looks like he's pathing towards bottom with only. It's not going to be. But we just see the Herald summoned at all. Well, that's what I'm wondering, because, you know, he's been holding on to it for a fair bit right now. All the priority seems to be in this mid lane, and Brum will definitely out-rotate what Ayla can do, because he's got Mobius to his name, so he's sticking with the team much to sort of respect and respond. They got mid prior. It's a big win. I think the biggest thing for Order right now is to try and establish some control, because right before this, they had no vision whatsoever. I think it was just one vision ward in their side of the jungle. And outside there we of go. that. I think isn't really going to find too much. Sheraldine, the Heraldine gets nothing. Mid lane priority just going to be again the focus. It's keeping the Chiefs at bay presently. Anything the Chiefs try and do, they're dealing with wards first. They're dealing with the fact they don't have control if they want to set up for objectives themselves. We've actually slowed down into very comfortable farming, respectively, across the entirety of Summoner's Rift. And for Swiper, who was two levels behind until he cleared that wave, he'll like that. Oh, he'll we'll take that. Down. Absolutely. He's uh, 40 CS down at this stage, two levels as well. Only just catching up to 10. So he's got a fair bit of catching up to make sure that he's a threat later on to this game. Oh, Rare has to be careful. He's being stalked a little bit here. They may even swap positions. Oh, Chris CK actually getting bounced into two members of order as they look to try and make a pincer maneuver happen. But Claire has been sitting uh, instead in the bottom lane. Yeah, it's reset time. We actually, there was just, just a lot of time spent farming. So there will be a lot of money in the pockets of most people. That should be the completed item here from Claire. Curious to see if he goes towards the looters. Yeah, because another option has been the GLP lately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for someone like Lissandra, I would say it's not a crucial item, you know, where an Orianna likes it to set up a shockwave. Lissandra can do that herself. Yep. So, looting's definitely the preferred choice. But if you're feeling cheeky and you wanted to kite people like the set, then you can. Like Baby's first champion. Pick up some items that just allow you to overlap it. Nah, I, so I disagree because... Baby's first champion shouldn't have active items. <laughs> Trust me, they won't use them. But think about it. You land a GLP, and then you can land your Q and your follow-up. Yeah, but, like, it doesn't matter what makes sense in theory. Because <laughs> if it's, if, like, I've coached them. Excuse me. <laughs> telling them. You're like, don't trigger me right now. I coached an iron player in jungle, and you had to tell him specifically camp by camp. Which is the best one? Not how to clear the camps, that's the next, that's bronze. Press the buttons! And didn't press the buttons. Well, I these said, guys are. What's on? an active item? He said, what's that? So. That's when the Skype call just randomly disconnects, eh? <laughs> Oops, sorry, plug pull. Summoner is disconnected. <laughs> well, seems Chiefs are uncontested when it comes to these objectives at this stage. Two Drakes to their name. This time they pick up the Rift Herald without a contest. They're trading the map though, so they have split the map in half. It looks like Rare is just going to be catching top lane, no teleport. Rare is sword. in trouble right now because yeah. there are four members here. Gonna have to make sure He's that. He's cleared the wave. He's good. He's got a kill. Uh, what are you doing? Okay. What's going on? There's no wave. That's a, a lesson has been learned today the hard way. 
I'm so confused there because I thought that was a situation where Kaleo was like going to have to play immaculately with his ultimate to try and juke and dodge and this and that, and he just says hello. Oh. You hate to see it. You really hate to see it. And now they've gone towards... The timing as well. Of all things for it to happen, it happens right when Chiefs can acquire themselves soul points. A bit of a lapse of judgment there. As Chiefs are starting to fall away with this game. I didn't think he was trying to die. I think he was just walking between the lane, between the tower. He was just killed for it. Just wanted to have a quick dash over to his mate Slips. Now I'm dead. You can see the idea was, let's pick up a kill. There's no chance for Claire to engage and contest this next Drake. You can try and help get Swiper online. It didn't happen, though. No. It did not happen, as the Chiefs now find themselves in a very comfortable spot, as I mentioned. Everything on the map is uh, is rosy for them so far. In the words of one of the OPL experts of old, oh no -y. Oh no -y. <laughs> I would explain that play. <laughs> Maybe his first words. We're at soul point here, four Chiefs. Four minutes away though, so no too, not too much stress just yet. But this Elise hasn't really found opportunities after that mid lane gang to get anything going on the map. Has been weathered quite nicely, even though he only finds himself 200 gold ahead. And I didn't get a chance to look at any other gold value because that was just removed immediately. Well, I mean, you've you got to look at the top lane especially. That is where the majority of this gold is. It's the We're rookie. Back. And oh, yeah, that's 2,100 gold. It's a lot of gold right now. These two guys on your screen. That's two sets of Merc treads, people. Tien is flexing. That is a needlessly large rod and a blasting one. Very, very comfortable with the position they're in right now. How else can we compare that to people? Just a lot. It's just a lot. Swipers in the bin. That's uh, a lot of horror snacks. Well, Poro Snacks are, have a sell value of 30, so how much do you think they're actually worth to buy retail? Oh, it depends how much the depreciation is when you buy it from the factory, eh? I'm probably saying 90, they also, big profit yeah. margins. It also depends on the items. Uh, even in League of Legends, their sell values are completely different. I'll pick up a mortgage for that one. Well, the mid lane pressure is where it's all at right now. Set is still split pushing top lane. He wants to try and get himself back into this game. Any single time Akali groups up, it's a chance for him to try and find some value of his own. The one thing I will say here is that when you've got a bruiser composition like Order have put together for themselves, no AD carry, yeah. no traditional sense of wave clear, yeah. uh, not even the safest wave clear from someone like Harry in mid lane on the LeBlanc. So if they fall behind, really difficult. It feels a little bit like the game we saw earlier today. I believe it was uh, Legacy and Mammoth when Mammoth drafted a full bruiser comp. They're trying to get in your face. They're trying to find those leads. And then when the siege began... Aerys in trouble. They found themselves He's on the wrong side trouble. of the map. Oh. He's being respected because everyone from Order is missing on bot side. I could tell wanted a crack at that, though. Probably did. Decides to show some restraint right now. Signs of maturity from the player that would take on the 1v4, I would imagine, if his team didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder if it was his choice. Or if Claire said, you cut that out. Behave. Do not do that. Ping's in the bot lane, no. Both junglers have shown face. Both junglers deciding if or when they decide to engage. But I think for the most part, Rusty, it's the case of let's wait for this next objective to respawn. Let's get some items online. Yeah, it's a Cloud Dragon as well. So the Cloud Soul, I don't mind it. It's very good. Depends on the champion you're playing. It's incredible for the Chiefs. There's Olaf presses his R button, becomes invincible, yeah. and actually just like... He will run you down. Oh, it just goes. He will run through you. He's just, he doesn't, you won't know what hit you. Olaf screams so loudly he's going to run you over. It's not a bad thing as well for someone like an Akali who presses that R1, gets a burst of move speed to cover distance as well. Side laning becomes a lot easier. So, yeah, not a bad soul, all things considered, but it's not strictly a combat soul as we are looking at Croc here. Here's the situation as uh, we're going to have to see the Olaf burn, Ragnarok, and a flash. Oh, Moonlight Vision to turn things around. Looks like the Chiefs want to try and force this fight out as the TP comes in from the Chiefs. They're looking to try and start things off as Harry picks up one, but Clay responds in similar oh, yeah. fashion. That's Claire going big, double kill with the Zonyas as well. He does what he does best, and that is body members as Chiefs TM comes in. And That's uh, it. 
yeah, the Chiefs showcase what they can do with this composition. They've been patient, they've bought items, and they've executed. All that's left for the Chiefs is to put a bow on it after that team fight. They're able to wrap that team fight up pretty cleanly. Baron on the cards. They'll move from Baron most likely down towards the Drake as well, and suddenly they're in not just the driver's seat, they're in the most commanding position possible. That was basically the moment there for the side of order. Maybe they get the poke. The Chiefs re-engage after they use summoner spells to get away. So there were still you know, some small trades to be seen, but it's still so clean. They just missed their jumper for a smite. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yep, well, they drew Olaf. order in for a false sense of security there. Not sure if we'll see a replay, but Olaf definitely looked in trouble. And the thing, so we'll watch this fight again, and I'll get to my point in a second. It starts like this. You've got the flash used, the ult used by a croc on the Olaf, but he still goes back in for the fight, still goes in for the play, and he will die, but the cost is high. One person already dead. Set tries to take Claire out of the fight, but he just flashes forwards and chunks them all out to death. And then Tan will come in with Claire to ensure that last kill goes over to them. And it's easy as you like. Now, the point that I wanted to make here yeah. is that if I was Order, I feel like I would give them the soul. Okay. Because then it's an Elder. And you want that more and than you, you want. you play for Elder, yeah. You Why just delay right the soul, right? Like, yeah, I get you. I feel that point. I actually think you don't contest it and take the risk with the Elder, because that's one of the only chances you'll have to come back into this, right? Like, it's only 6,000, 7,000 up between them, but it feels so much more, we're only 24 minutes in. Yeah, I think the correct decision is don't contest that. I think right now, though, the question is also how much value can Chiefs find with this soul as well as this Baron? How much gold, structural well, it. It's a Cloud Soul. It's movement speed when you use your ultimate. Like, that's not... Well, it's not game-breaking. It doesn't break turrets. But it does give you the ability, obviously, to freely roam and freely rotate. Maybe take a few more aggressive uh, pathing options. But you're off your order right now. You want to really force this one because Chief Tien does not have his teleport. They're looking to try and make this one happen right now. Members are jumping on in. It's set it gets rowdy. There's the shield, but Croc denies it with the shield. Tien. He goes gold and Katsuri finds one. Oh, Tien is putting on a masterclass, and this is why Akali gets banned. That's a triple kill, and that is ace. In order to go for it again, they look for the fight in mid lane. They're bested once more on the Rift Town with the triple. They get the ace. The Medjai is even there for Claire. It's not able to get the stacks that he's after. And they'll probably just push to end here, Skibby. They've got 14 seconds on the first member respawning. That's at least the inhib. I think they'll just go for end. I think I even said that Tien had no teleport. I'm just that blinded by what they're doing. Just the amount of pressure. They aren't going to let Order even hit that Elder Drake point. No, they want the victory. They will find that victory. And they're working towards that Nexus Tower right now. It's a Hail Mary attempt for the boys of Order as they do manage to pick up the Olaf. But that core is falling. And Chiefs go GG. And the Chiefs really stamped their foot down on the OPL this season. The first game of week two. Off the cards, they're 3-0. They are dominating their way through the rift. And it feels like they are starting to really make it known that there is a top of the ladder, and they are there. Many members highly anticipating this matchup between these two teams, and a few questions answered them. Definitely between what Tien could have met as how he was able to go up against his former teammate in that top lane. He put on a masterclass for that Akali. Yeah, Akali getting the rare. Let through pick ban, not first picked, but locked away immediately by their opponents. And Tien, if you give him those bruises, he's going to have a very good time of it. As the Chiefs are able to take down their opponents pretty cleanly in the end. They're going to be very happy with that one indeed. Order, a bit upset, rightfully so. Never really had a chance to get themselves into this game. But the handshakes are going to come out across regardless. And we'll have to see really what it goes back to the drawing board, how they recover from this one. You see the hugs come out there from the top lane as we've been discussing in this vital matchup. But Claire mentioned that, you know, we felt strong. We weren't too sure before, but we are strong. And now we know we definitely are beast mode. We are one of the best without a doubt. And I think this result here, Nick, really proves that to be one of the cases. Absolutely. I mean, when all uh, sorry, when Chiefs Woo! decide, welcome to the couch. Uh, when Chiefs decide that they want to end, they end. Yeah. That was uh, that had shades of uh, of game number one about it. His microphone's over I've here. Got a it's microphone okay. here for you. You can just come sit down. 
No, it was. It was quick. Uh, the Chiefs, once they got those leads, looked very, very clean once again. Mm -hmm. It felt like there was a, at the very start, like it was slow. It was like, can we get those first picks? And, you know, Tan gets the small lead. Even the early kill in mid lane, like, starting to really, like, really ramp up. And then just bang. Like, once they get those advantages, it hits a certain point, yeah. certain objective, and it just cascades. Tell you what, got a ban of Kari. Uh, well done, mate. How are you feeling about that? Um, feeling pretty good, actually, because I was really, like, Lacking confidence coming to this game. So it feels good that I actually played well today. Where was the lack of confidence coming from? Um, so in my practice the past two weeks, I think I'm in my worst form I've been in. But the fact that we're picking up wins is mm -hmm. like, when I feel like I'm in my worst form and we're actually winning, that's a good sign. So that gives me a lot of confidence now that I won today. Yeah, well, uh, look. You need the confidence and I think a decisive win uh, over an opponent that obviously we've been talking a lot about the Swiper Chiefs of history course. there. Does that add a sort of pressure coming into this kind of game? Um, yeah, because my team really wanted to prove a point like, you know, like even though we don't like people were questioning our pickups, like power ranking guys, like, oh, did they make the right moves? And this was like a statement like, OK, this is like we made the right decisions mm -hmm. coming into this year. And how are they working with Croc and Korea CK coming um, in? It's going pretty well, actually. Like, they fitted in really well. And, yeah, I can't... I guess we're just doing well. Like, yeah. just going well. Like, that's all I can say. you got to build that confidence, man. You guys are you guys are on a streak. Currently get better, right? You've yeah. Said, you've said it yourself. If, totally. if you're having rough scrims and you're still winning, like, can only improve, right? Yeah, pretty much. You should stick around for MPL and see how badly I play. Then you'll feel better about yourself. <laughs> I've been uh, watching. <laughs> well, uh -oh. Kateri, well done uh, on the win. Congratulations. Stick around for the end of the show because we, uh, we are about to uh, close it out. It's been... Look, it's been a fast night, I feel yeah, It like, really Rusty. has, actually, yeah. Have we had a game over 30? Oh, if it was, barely, by like a yeah. minute or two, maybe game three? Oof. Well, the first one was 21 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Was that, by. Was that the legacy game? 21 minutes? Yeah, yeah 21 yeah, yeah. minute Nexus. Yeah. What, what was the longest game? Uh, I think it was the last game. I think it was Pentanet and uh, AV. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was around. I got to Elder, actually, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I got to Elder. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's take a look at the results from today. Let's not just talk about the length. Let's talk about the wins. Uh, Mammoth take uh, the loss against Legacy for game number one. Uh, Gravitas can't beat Direwolves for game two. Avant take down Pentanet in game number three. And obviously the Chiefs here on the couch taking down order for game number four. A look at the schedule for tomorrow because obviously the action just keeps on coming this weekend. Uh, first up we have Gravitas versus Pentanet, then AV versus Order, Legacy take on the Direwolves and Chiefs up against Mammoth. Katsuri, how are you feeling about Chiefs? Uh, and Mammoth's fine. Um, uh, it just, I just feel the same. Like, Chiefs come into every game with confidence. Mm -hmm. Like, well, everyone around me does. So, nothing really, doesn't matter what team. It's more like we come into every, every game like, okay, if we play the way we want, doesn't matter who we verse, we should pick up wins, regardless of who we verse. You see, you speak with the confidence. You got to feel it in your bones. Uh, chat, tweet at Ketsuri. Give him some uh, confidence boosting <laughs> love. Uh, on the internet. I feel like that's what we need. Uh, what we also need from you guys is pictures of the anime uh, drawings OPL inspired that you have drawn. You saw the poros. You saw how little what? effort you have to put I into I made mine like Super that. Saiyan. I, you don't have to look at it, but I, started, <laughs> I became anime inspired the longer we sat here and looked at them. All you need to do is send in an original artwork in an anime style using the hashtag Hashtag Opel, OPL Anime. Uh, send it in on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Uh, if you enter before midnight tonight, then you are eligible for this week's prizes. This week's prizes, again, are the sand skins. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, you get the champion if you don't have the champion in the first place. A massive thank you to our sponsor, McDonald's, for making all of this possible. Uh, thank you, Rusty. Thank you to Skimmy and thank you to Spawn uh, for a lovely evening. Katsuri, thank you for hanging out. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You're the best player in the OPL. I want you to repeat that, self to you, that to yourself five times before you go to bed tonight. Uh, and to uh, see the worst player in the OPL, stick around for the MPL, which is coming up right after this short break. He actually comes from the uh, top lane minions himself. Croc finds the first one. And they're 
chase on through right now. Zig's also got the skin to make sure Akali can't do Akali things right now, but she's just going to jump in regardless and find a second as they now look for a triple. Harry with the clones, Duke's one way. He's going to try and get the Bramble with to get the kill. Looks like the Chiefs want to try and force this fight out as the TP comes in from the Chiefs. They're looking to try and start things off as Harry picks up one, but Clay responds in similar oh, yeah. fashion. That's Claire going big, double kill with the Zonyas as well. He does what he does best, and that is body members as Chief Tien comes in. Chief Tien does not have his teleport. They're looking to try and make this one happen right now. Members are jumping on in. It's set, gets rowdy. There's the shield, but Croc denies it with the shields. Tien. He goes gold, and Katsuri finds one. Oh, Tien is putting on a masterclass, and this is why Akali gets banned. That's a triple kill, and that is ace. And they're working towards that Nexus Tower right now. It's a Hail Mary attempt for the boys of order as they do manage to pick up the Ola, but that core is falling and Chiefs go GG. Imagine if you took Coca-Cola No Sugar and full on froze it. Well, now you don't have to. Head down to Macca's and try the new frozen Coke No Sugar for just $1. Exclusive to Macca's.